Let's talk about how to solve exponential equations. I'll take you from the basic like this to more complicated examples like this and this. Now, first of all, how do you recognize an exponential equation? You will be solving for a variable, so you'll be solving for x, there'll be an equal sign, you're solving, you're trying to get the x by itself, isolate the x, so we want to get an answer x is equal to, but this is a special type of equation where the exponent contains a variable. Now remember, when taking a look at something like this, this three is the base, this up here is the exponent. So three is the base, x is the exponent, the exponent contains a variable. Now. How we approach a question like this, this is a very basic and simple one. Our rules are to get the bases the same. So instead of 9, I'm going to rewrite it as 3 to the power of 2. Okay, this side we keep it 3 to the power of x. Then once the bases are the same, we are allowed to get rid of or drop the base. And then x is equal to 2. Think about it. Is this true? If I take 2 and I put it in the place of x, so 3 to the power of 2, does it give me 9? Yes, indeed it does. So our steps, our rules, get the basis the same. And a little trick that you can do on your calculator is to use shift fact. So you type the number in. So for example, 9, you press the equals button over here. You press the shift button. And then you press the button that says fact at the top of it. It's a button that looks like this on your calculator. It says fact written on the top. And then when you do that, it gets it like this, 3 to the power of 2. Obviously for 9, I think it's easy to work out that it's 3 to the power of 2. It's for other bigger numbers that you may not know what it is in its prime base form. So you use your calculator, get the bases the same. Once the bases are the same, we are allowed to drop the base and then we continue to solve. So what about something like this? Well, 2 to the power of x, I want to first work on isolating that, getting that by itself. And how do you do that? Well, this is being multiplied by 3, so you need to do the inverse operation. Divide both sides of the equation by 3. The opposite of times 3 is divide by 3. So you're going to have 2 to the power of x, 24 divided by 3 is 8. And then we follow the same rules, get the bases the same. So 8 is 2 to the power of 3. Then once the bases are the same, these big numbers here, you can drop them and x is equal to 3. Okay, that's the second basic example. Then the third basic example is something like this. Now I'm calling them basic examples because this is stuff that you did in grade 9, grade 10. This is what it looks like. How I explain it to my classes is that we don't want fractions, okay? We want to isolate x, we want to get the bases the same, and then we want to avoid fractions. So first step is, I would say the easiest way to think of it is first get the bases the same. And you might be like, but ma'am, this is a fraction. What I mean is this big number over here. Try and get it to have the same base as this one over here. I always think the one that has the variable in the exponent get the other one to have the same base as that one. So over here, this one had the variable in the exponent. So I, I'm going to focus on getting this one to have the same base as this one. Okay, so same thing here. This one is, I'm going to keep 2 to the power of x. 16 can be rewritten as 2 to the power of 4. So I haven't changed anything. I've just rewritten 16 as 2 to the power of 4. But now I don't want it as a fraction. I need to make sure that the bases are the same. But not quite, because this isn't a fraction. So how would I get it out of fraction form? You take that to the top. When you move something to the top, or move it from the top to the bottom. So when you move from upstairs to downstairs, or downstairs to upstairs, the sign of the exponent changes. So if I move this upstairs, it was 2 to the power of 4. It's now going to be 2 to the power of negative 4. You should know that. Now the bases are the same. We can drop the base and x is going to equal negative 4. I hope that makes sense. Here are the steps to help you out with that one. Now getting to something a little bit more interesting. We can see that I have completely different bases here. This is 9, 27 and 3. In order to solve this equation, what we are going to have to do first is get the bases the same. So get them into their prime bases. So you're going to use your calculator trick to help you if you can't see it. I'm going to make all of them have the base of 3. So instead of 9, I'm going to rewrite the 9 as 3 to the power of 2. 
okay? Now, instead of 9, I write 3 to the power of 2. 9 had this original exponent. It still needs to have that original exponent. Okay, we'll deal with that now. Then instead of 27, I'm going to have 3 to the power of 3 because 3 to the power of 3 is 27. I haven't changed anything. I'm just rewriting 27 into prime bases. And then it was raised to the power of x. It must still be. And then the last one, 3 to the power of x plus 2. My next step is going to be doing power inside multiplied by the power outside. Exponent inside multiplied by the exponent outside. Now, where I see a lot of students go wrong is they will know to multiply the x by 2, so 3 to the power of 2x, but they forget about the negative 1. Okay, it's 2 multiplied by negative 1, so that also becomes negative 2. This is going to be 3 to the power of 3x, and this side over here, it's going to be 3 to the power of x plus 2. Now, what would make this easier? Now you could say, ma'am, awesome, all the bases are the same, so according to your steps, we can drop the base. Yes, but what would make it easier is if you simplify this side of the equation over here, and now you need to remember your exponent rules. These bases are the same, 3 and 3. The bases are the same, and we know if we are multiplying, which is what we're doing over here, okay, we are multiplying these two together, and the bases are the same, we keep the base and we add the exponent. So I'm going to add these two together. So essentially this, okay, on this side, I keep it the same. Now, what's going to happen if I add these two together? Let's just do it in the same line. 3x plus x is 4x plus 2. Like that, 4x plus 2. And now it's easier. Now the bases are the same. So I may drop the bases. And then you rewrite that over here, 2x minus 2. You rewrite that over there, 4x plus 2. And then we solve like normal. I'm going to get the x's to one side, non-x's to the other. And eventually we get this at the bottom, x is equal to negative 2. Now here's a nice one. It involves quite a few of the rules that I've been teaching you in the grade 11 algebra playlist so far. So let's get into it. First things first, I would consider writing the bases as prime bases. So 4 to the power of x, 8 to the power of x plus 1. You could think of it as, is there a way to write the 8 so that it, or yeah, is there a way to write the 8 so it has a base of 4? No. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 to the power of 2 is 16. So I can't do that. I need to rewrite both of the bases. So 4 into its prime bases and 8 into its prime bases. So instead of 4, I'm going to write 2 to the power of 2. And remember, it originally had that x exponent. It must still have that x exponent. And over here, instead of 8, I'm doing 2 to the power of 3. And that original exponent needs to be rewritten over here. So prime bases, very important first step in exponents. We often, often do prime bases as our first step. Then I'm just going to do power inside multiplied by power outside, exponent inside multiplied by exponent outside, 2 to the power of 2x. And on this side, it's going to be 1 over, remember when we do it over here, it's 3 times x and 3 times 1. Very important. So it's 2 to the power of 3x plus 3. Very, very important. And over here, I have a root. So I hope you remember what the rule is when dealing with this. You take the inside 2x divided by the outside. So what I mean by the outside is the number over here in the root. So it is 2x, the inside, divided by the outside, the number here, which is a 2. So to simplify that, it's essentially 2x divided by 2, which we know 2x divided by 2 is just x, like that. And now, very, very important. I don't want fractions. So I want to move this entire business over here upstairs. I want to move it from the denominator to the numerator. But remember what I told you in one of the previous examples. When we move this upstairs, the exponent becomes negative. Now, this is where a lot of my learners go wrong. They think that what I mean is, or what we mean as teachers, is when this moves upstairs, that you make this whole thing over here a negative. 
No, it's never the base that becomes a negative. So it stays a positive two base when it moves upstairs. The exponent, this, needs to become negative. So we need to put a negative in front of that whole exponent. That's very important. And now I know, well, I hope you know, you can imagine what's going to happen over here. We have to multiply or distribute the negative into, so it's going to be 2 to the power of negative 3x minus 3. And then finally, the bases are the same. So our rule is when the bases are the same, we can drop the base. And what we left with, I'm going to continue the sum over here. What we left with on the left hand side of the equal sign is x. And what we left with on the right hand side of the equal sign is negative 3x minus 3. Then we get the x's to one side. This is minus x. The inverse operation is plus x. So x plus 3x is 4x. And the negative 3 stays over here. And then negative 3 divided by 4. I always tell my students, remember, the number next to the variable, that goes at the bottom of the denominator if you're forgetting which way to divide. Remember, you can always check to see if you solved an equation properly. How do you do that? You take the answer that you got for x, which is negative 3 over 4, you put it in the place of x, and you check to see if the left-hand side of the equation equals the right-hand side of the equation. If it does, you know you've solved correctly. In the next video, we'll continue with exponential equations, but we'll go over ones where you need to factorize first. I'll see you then. Bye, everyone.